Welcome to episode 11 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast for sharing tips, apps, and gear for your iPhone and iPad, along with other technologies that get you using iOS in a fun, productive, and meaningful way. I'm your host, David Ginsberg, and joining me as always is Melissa Davis. How are you doing, Melissa? Hey, I'm glad to be here finally. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad we're back we're, in the seat. We're, 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 we got back in the saddle. We haven't recorded an episode in almost over a month here. Shh, uh, don't tell better, them. I don't tell anybody that, but, <laughs> sh- but we got a lot of great things in store for you today. We, we time travel here on the show, you know? Yeah, that, we right? do. We do. And uh, there's, there's been a lot going on in the Apple world. You know, got some, uh, some new iPhones and uh, probably uh, Apple TV coming out soon, but we'll talk about that in future episodes. That's. Uh, Coming soon. Uh, I, I know poised, they, ready to pounce on that stuff. Yeah, rumor has it they're going to have an, uh, a event on September twelfth. So we'll we'll anxiously await for that. That's a few weeks away. So when we record this episode, so what? Uh, let's uh, kick right in and uh, talk some of the news that I found and some links uh, we could talk about. First thing I uh, came across was uh, iTunes U collections are now being moved over to Apple Podcasts, and you didn't uh, weren't aware of that until I brought it to your attention. Um, so what's basically happening is uh, in September, they're saying when Apple announced uh, when iTunes 12.7 is released. So that kind of tells me there's going to be a brand new version of iTunes. Grr. Uh, mm, and well, at least they're taking podcasting and iTunes seriously. Yeah, they are. And I, I think what and then what's going to happen is iTunes U collections will all be moved into the Apple podcast. So uh, the the uh, iTunes U iTunes U courses will only be available through the app on iOS, which is very interesting because now they've pretty much removed those from iTunes. So you can't get them on your Mac. You only can get them from your iOS device. So that's going to be interesting. Um, and, and according according to Apple's announcement, the support pages, they're automatically going to convert all these collections to podcasts in September and they're going to eliminate the whole section in iTunes U on Mac OS. So that's kind of sad. So I'm not sure it's, how. Yeah, it's mixed though, because doesn't it seem like it points to that they're taking the podcast app more seriously? Yeah. I, or I, I or do you so. think they're gonna like I don't know this is harsh, but you think they're gonna like kill it like like they do iTunes? Do you think <laughs> everybody? Yeah. I don't know. There's just no love. There's no love. Where is yeah. the love for iTunes and where is the love <laughs> for the podcast app? It seems well, like there isn't any. Tells me that potentially they might even think about putting a podcast app separate from iTunes on Ma- on the Mac. I mean, it's very possible. Yeah. Right. Um, but the other thing too is, you know, with a lot, a lot of these iTunes U courses do have EPUB uh, books. So, yeah, what's going to uh, happen to those? So they're saying that they're going to tell the content providers they have to convert them. Uh, it's better, it's best to switch them to PDFs, as they're suggesting. So, getting all these content providers to convert all those is going to be an interesting mm-hmm. task to see. How yeah, it's not going to make too many people happy. Yeah. But podcasts, as we know, have been growing very much in popularity. So uh, it makes it only makes sense to uh, to have uh, iTunes U collections in there just to make it a little easier to grab them. Uh, yeah, like consolidating just the UI, consolidating it all into one area. Yeah. So I mean, I, I caught my eye. I thought it'd be as interesting to talk about. And you know, I think all of us, a lot, lot of us, listen to podcasts. Um, I use a third party catch podcast catcher. Of course, Downcast is my favorite, and I had there's a there's a version for the Mac that I always use when um, I'm on my Mac. So I really didn't, hadn't really utilized I'm the podcast. Still using yet. Castro. <laughs> you love Castro. Uh, but I just can't get out of it. I just can't quit it. <laughs> it's a uh, you know it's just the only thing. If I if if Castro supported videos, I'd be all over it. But I know, I know. Well, see, and that's just it. It's like it, for me. You know, I had I had to think about that a lot. When I first got an iPad, I, I remember thinking, oh, I'm just going to make everything. I'm just going to put everything on my iPad that I had on my iPhone. And after using it, after a while, it dawned on me that, you know, there is there is such a thing as, well, that part didn't dawn on me, but there is such a thing as the right tool for the job. Right. And for a lot of the apps that I was using, it just wasn't the right fit for me. The type of app that I was using and the type of job that I wanted the app to do mm-hmm was much better suited to be using it in the palm of my hand with my iPhone. Right. Something that I could actually, you know, cradle in one hand. And then using two hands on an iPad was just, I don't know, it's just too much for that particular, those particular apps. So when it comes to video podcasts, I don't right. really watch. And that's just me. I know we all have different needs. And that's the beauty of, of iOS and everything right. is it it's it's built to fit anybody's needs, really. But sure. I like to watch my video podcasts on my Apple TV. Okay. So there you go. Yeah, we, that's why. That's why the what makes the world go round here. We have a lot of great things that we can choose from and not be stuck to this one thing, right? Well, a lot of choices frustrates a lot of people, but I absolutely uh, love it. I, I think it's you great. You both. I, I rather yeah. have choice. I mean, that's really what it is. So, 
so that's pretty much I had all had to say about that topic. It, uh, I, I think it'll be an exciting thing. I don't, I don't think too many people will be paying too much uh, attention to that. It was uh, brought up at, on uh, MacStories.net, where I caught it. So, um, so obviously the guys over there were were interested in it, so they talked about it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't think there's much else we can say about that, other than uh, let's go on to the next the, the next news topic of the day. Moving uh, right along, and uh, I uh, I was kind of excited to see, and I've never seen Apple do this before. Is they actually created iOS 11 how-to tips for the iPad uh, before it was even released? And I was like, wow, this is interesting. I, have you ever seen Apple do this before? Before an, uh, an actual OS is released? Not before it's been released, but yeah, I was after. impressed the last time we talked about this when yeah. they I, you you tipped us to iPhone like how-to videos, and that was right. kind of a, a new thing. I mean, they've always they've always had something out there. Of course, they have their knowledge base articles and their how-tos and things like that. But video is is becoming more and more popular. Just the fact oh, that they have such sure. a they have a presence on YouTube. They have their own Huge. YouTube channel. Huge. So yeah, yeah. They so there's there's something so. about this that they're they're doing more of, you know. But to to do it on the version of the iOS that hasn't even been released yet, I, th- yeah. I think they're really grasping the fact that people in, in are starting to use the public betas a lot more frequently than well, if, honestly, than they should be. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not. I still am not doing it. Not, I'm still not doing it. I'm I like I'm it. so envious of people who have you know stuff that they can put it on. That's why I'm. Itch and I'm tr- that's why I've been busy because I've been working more and I'm yeah, trying to save up to get another iPad so that I can run iOS 11 on it when it comes out because I don't I I'm stuck my well, my fourth gen isn't going to run it so lucky you today I I've been running iOS 11 the the, the developer the pop the, the yeah the I just have to leave lean on Dave <laughs> so I can tell you about it when now we we talk about my iPad here because I I bit the bullet and do it because I knew we were gonna we we're gonna talk about it mm-hmm. and I wanted to to, to kind of give you my fir- very very first impressions as well as thanks for taking one for the team oh, I've, you're so devoted I'm telling you this version is very solid I'm not I'm not that's the good least worry about it would I put it on my iPhone no way I'm we waiting because mm-hmm. that's I'm too dependent on my iPhone to do it so I didn't do that one yet but. yeah that's just it I just I just no, I just can't. <laughs> so the uh, there are six videos out there. We'll have a link in the show notes uh, so you can take a look at them. Um, and it's it's uh, I'll just kind of read over the six as far as the topics go. Uh, the doc, amazing, amazing. I love it. It's really easy to to to, uh, to be able to handle putting all your uh, icons. I'm looking at the doc right now, and I see all these. It remembers all the um, apps that you used just previous, and you can go right to it, be able to grab it, which is great because what you have to do before, go into the menu and go to the one that you had been using. Um, the other one they have, uh, sh- uh, as far as video goes, is how to manage and fly through your fl- files. It's because they did add uh, uh, file support. Finally, you can move your files around very easily. Um, that I'm really looking forward yeah, to. So I we'll, love we'll, file support. We'll hit all these topics, believe me, in future episodes uh, once uh, iOS 11 comes out. And uh, believe me, next month I'll be s- super busy with the Apple user group I'll be talking about during my uh, special interest group. So there's... I have a lot fresh in my mind to talk about <laughs> once, uh, once I start doing <laughs> Be able to laundry. hold you down. <laughs> you know? And uh, uh, I, so we'll be definitely doing that. Um, uh, the third one was about to how to get things more done more quickly by being able to multitask. Multitasking is amazing. It's very easy to move things around so, mu- so much more so than ever. And the uh, fourth one was uh, how to effortlessly, effortlessly scan and sign a document. They've incorporated even more tools in that. Um the Apple Pencil, even more expanded items, being able to mark stuff up beyond that. And then uh, uh, and the last one was, that it was how to get most out of your hands. So I did, didn't talk too much about that. But again, like I said, take a look at those videos. That's why I wanted to bring it up and uh, give you a uh, uh, give you a heads up. And it'll be in our show notes to take a look at those five, six videos. So with that, I think we could go ahead and move on and talk about this app that you really I got really kind of excited about that you're using for what not it's not really intended for uh the hours tracker if you want to I always find that. some way to use an app in some other way I don't know I just I, I guess I just think differently <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I use an app called hours tracker and I've talked about it on other podcasts too but I really do kind of live in this app as far as my little small business goes I use it to track my clients it's it's really you know it's like you're a uh, traditional, I guess, in the analog sense, a, a, a clock in, clock out, you know, remember when Bugs Bunny would go punch in and mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like that, you know, there's a big button, you clock in, you clock out. Uh, but it's so much more than that. You can enter details and you can add a break and you can, yeah, um, great, yeah. you know, put different rates, track taxes, times, you can change times, all this stuff. And so I've been using it for work to track my clients because I, I do freelance jobs. Sure. 
And then, um, you know, our kids went back to school. We go back to school a lot earlier out here in the West because it's a lot hotter. No, we do too. At least that's part of the reason anyway, but, you know, we all know how to do with testing. Anyway, uh, so the kids went back to school, so now they're starting to get homework, and we all hate homework. And my little guy has to log a certain amount of homework each time. And so I was, mm-hmm. I was, it was driving me nuts. Like, we were using, you know, traditional, like, egg timers, or, you know, we have, like, just a little digital timer that beeps and that sort of thing. And uh, something we just sat right in front of. We were trying a combination of different timers, and... It was getting crazy and I needed something that I could log because then I would lose track of it. I would go multitask and do something else and just lose track of it. So I just thought, well, you know, why don't I just treat this like a clock in and a clock out because I had to track two different subjects. So I started using this to track my kids homework. So it's not a real traditional way to use it because it is, you know, it's really built for freelancers. But uh, I I teased the developer about it online and I told him, you know, my ideas for it. And so he he liked that. He's the developer's very responsive. He's on Twitter too. So we'll put oh, a link cool. to that in the show notes. Oh, cool. But check it out, especially if you're a freelancer. It's really a helpful a helpful app. And you know, even our friend Jody Spangler, I think she told mm-hmm. me that her her grandkids use it to clock in and clock out. I think she she was teaching them how to repair iPhones and stuff and she was she, having them track she, their time for something. She so. amazes me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so That's it's, it's, it's good stuff. <laughs> That's great. So no, I, I, I check it out. We'll have all that information in the show notes. So it's a it's a great app. I've 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 dabbled in it a little bit. I haven't oh, have used you? it full time. Oh, good. Uh, but it looks like a great app and I may may, uh, may take a look at it a little closer. So uh, moving on, I wanted to talk about uh, some of the things I was able to do as far as uh, purchases this year. Now, of course, everybody, I'm always the early adopter and buying all the new stuff, and I shouldn't be doing that, but I do. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it was it, I was due for a new uh, MacBook Pro, and of course, we don't usually talk about maps, but Macs, but I wanted to kind of touch upon this story a little bit. Um, First step uh, is admitting you have a problem. Yeah, I do have a problem, but no, I, <laughs> my Mac was over four years old, so it was. I mean, I know that's still, that's that's pretty new to most of us, but. Yeah. It's pushing it though. It is a little, but uh, but I have the new MacBook Pro. It's the uh, the, you know, the top end model, but I won't even go into details as far as th- th- that goes. But it's a great machine, and, and right now, as I speak to you, um, but I had purchased it at the beginning of June, and then um, you know uh, they do have the uh, education discount, which I get because my wife being a teacher, you know, it's, the, the family can uh, actually take advantage of that discount. And I know we'll talk about that a little bit as far as it might be an even better deal than that, but. So I, I went ahead and purchased it because I had to because, uh, you know, we get some special financing through her school and stuff like that. So we'll get to that too much. But uh, so and then uh, a few weeks later, I find out, oh, look at this, the promotion, the Beats back to school promotion. They're giving away the, the Beats Solo 3s, which are $300 headphones, or you can get the uh, uh, the Beats Wireless X head earphones um, for, uh, for free using it with the Mac. And I said, like, well, this is crazy. I just it's not even a month I bought this thing. And, mm-hmm. and they couldn't get give the offer, and then I, of course, have had already purchased the uh, the iPad. So, uh, you, you get uh, you get a discount on the headsets with the iPhone, iPad, but with the MacBook Pro, you get it for free. So I said, like, so I went to my local Apple store. Long story short, talked to him. I said, hey, can can you help me out? And he says, yeah, no problem. Just uh, show me the, your your wife's ID to prove prove everything, and then I'll just uh, refund it and repurchase it, and you and you come and then take the free headsets. So, wow, that was easy. So super easy. I, but after talking to a few people, I had to, you know, push it a little bit uh, to, to get it. So, mm-hmm. But it was great. So then the same thing happened with the iPad. Um, I originally bought the uh, 64 gig because I was trying to be cheap, which is, makes sense. But then I started using it for a while, and I'm like, why did I do this? <laughs> it's going <laughs> to kill me. There's not going to be enough space. I, I'm a space <laughs> hog, and I, I, I've been so spoiled with my you know, my iPhone always has, has 256. So, so I had decided to... Um, uh, they let me uh, take it back the because I bought that one through um, through online, so they just took it back as a return, and then I just went turned around and purchased a new one. So I just upgraded it back up to two fifty six. I think you have a problem with that new computer smell. Yeah, I do. But I had a hundred dollar credit uh, uh, gift card from Apple, so it it, mm-hmm. it the, the cost burning a equal. hole in your pocket. Yeah, well, I got it. So uh, so then we went ahead and took it, took advantage of the uh, the Beats promotion and got the Beats X uh, Bluetooth headset. So the wife uses those, and I have the uh, I have the Solo threes, and they're they're actually really pretty good headphones. Headphones. I was I'm actually pretty impressed with them. Not as, Did not you as, use Apple Pay throughout the whole process? Uh, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I went to the store and. That the, they just took care of it, took it on the credit card, and, we're, and we're, we were all good. So, mm-hmm. okay. uh, but yeah, that that that's a small part piece part of the story. But um, what I wanted to do is was actually kind of give you a little bit of a mini review of what uh, uh, what I think of this iPad so far. Um, 
it's a it's an amazing pipette. I think I'm I'm very pleased because I did have the 12.9 inch and I I ended up selling that because I just I just didn't think I needed it. I don't think the size the size screen wasn't was okay, but it was I think it was too large for me it's just as far as the size goes. Since I have a you know, already have a Mac too. Uh, that, that, was, that was a, that was last year, and then I did you know the new model came out. I did I had already returned it a while ago, so I went back to the 9.7 inch, and then I just upgraded to this new 10.5 inch. Well. I'm pretty happy that I did that because you know the first thing that I noticed right away is the uh, the the promotion the pro motion it's uh, it's amazing uh, refresh rate when you get to, uh, when you when you're using this device it, I mean you you see it zippy when you're when you're flipping between screens it's 120 hertz refresh versus the 60 hertz which was the standard on the 9.7 inch previous to it mm-hmm. um, but. In itself, I, I, the video just looks spectacular, and you definitely can tell the difference. It's just the, the, the screen is super sharp, and it's super uh, uh, slick when you're working with a lot of different apps, whether it be graphics, whether it be video. Um, it just looks good. So I'm very impressed with that. Um, can you give me an example of something that you used to test it out, like what, like a high-end video or something that you watched? Yeah, high-end videos. If I using Netflix, you definitely see a difference in, in the uh, the quality of the videos. Um, you uh, even podcasts. You go into podcasts and watching watching the high, high def podcasts. Um, you definitely notice a difference um, w- with it. Like an action, like an action movie. The actions look yeah, really smooth they, and stuff. Smooth, real clear. Uh, the the color is is just amazing. Um, and then add into the mix having iOS 11 on it, which I didn't have originally. Um, but when I updated to it, I see even more in, insane, impressive, uh, performance to it. And, and I, I like the size, the size, you, it's a subtle difference in noticing of the size. You look at the edge of the screens on both ends there. It's much thinner than the uh, 9.7 it was. Um, so in itself, I think the, the screen is just, it's got a, a great, great, uh, great view. Um, things with the, like the multi-touch that's part of iOS 11 works flawlessly. It's, it's very smooth, very, uh, uh, uniform makes things very easy. Multitasking is great. And you know, iOS, you know, Apple is really pushing this. The iOS 11 could potentially be, you know, that, uh, that PC killer it could be the thing that you could I wonder use. if it's going to kill off its own Mac sometimes. That, and, that's, and that's the thing. I, do you wonder, is it going to kill it off? Um, so it, it really, you wonder, you wonder. So, well, I, when more and more of my clients are, are kind of like, that's kind of a request. They want me to teach them. Mm-hmm. They don't come out and say it, but what they're really in effect asking me to do is to help them wean off of their laptop. It's, it's for their needs. It's a little too overkill for what right. they need to be able to do. And they want to learn how to use these, these touch devices. It's not always the best fit as Jody and I have talked about for our clients, mm-hmm. Um, sometimes depending on, on what their needs are, it is a better fit for them to stick with a laptop because sometimes their, their family will push them into, well, grandma, why don't you just get an iPad? Well, it's not just that easy, but I do have some clients that are savvy enough and skilled enough that they can switch to just an iPad and they, they just, they don't want the Mac anymore. There's just too much upkeep and constant. I mean, for a while there, I mean, this is maybe not so much of an issue, but for a while there was like, I constantly had to keep up with their flash updates and right. they were getting malware installed because they were going to sport, sports sites, checking scores or trying to watch free sports videos or something. And, you know, it happens to innocent people too. And that was an issue. Just, you know, things that you don't have to deal with on an iPad. It's just a lot less overhead on an iPad than it is on a, on a Mac, a fully fledged Mac. Absolutely. And it just seems like, you know, they just don't have those those needs anymore. So I do worry. It not Worry, I don't know if that's the right word. I mean, of course, I'm always going to use a Mac. That's just that's just a given. I, I don't yeah. think I could ever switch to just using an iPad full time. As much as I use my iPhone, I mean, I do use more and more. I mean, there are times when my laptop, it's, yeah. as much as I love my laptop, there I can, I can go days without, you know, touching it because I can get a lot done on the iPhone. But yeah, I, I wonder. No, and, and and I see it. I, I actually tried. That was the first I I traveled. Did two trips the last uh, couple months, and I, I I traveled just with my iPad. And I survived. And how did it go? I survived. I did. I didn't go through too much withdrawal. You survived, but were you really happy? Like, were, were you, was there any time where you were missing your Mac? No, no. I mean, as far as when I travel, no. Um, okay. I I mean, when I'm back at home, I would rather be able to use my Mac for. For, for other things with the full screen and all that stuff, you know, when you want to sit at mm-hmm. your desk. Um, but when I travel, I don't, I don't think, 
I'm going to miss it as much. I mean, other than if I travel for business and I need it with me, then yeah, I'll, um, I'll, I'll probably want to have it with me, but. Uh, well, even if screen real estate, like even if, if the big screen, cause I, I hear that too. I have a client who she's on the verge where she is one of those people that really should ditch her Mac. I mean, because of right. the needs that she does have are so basic that, right. uh, the only justification she has for keeping her Mac is because she has a huge cinema display. And I keep telling her, well, if, if it's the screen size, cause you know, she's getting macular degeneration or, mm-hmm. you know, there's eyesight issues and things like that. And I thought, well, if that's an issue, then why don't we get you a new Apple TV and airplay your iPad screen, you know, or, I mean, there's, there's ways you can hook up to an external oh, monitor with oh, HDMI and stuff. So if that's really the issue, then you still could switch to an iPad, right? I agree. I agree hundred percent. Now, uh, this time I, I decided not to go with the Apple uh, keyboard case because I didn't just really didn't use the keyboard. Didn't use it, yeah. It's mm-hmm. expensive. But you gave it a try, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, so that was a little overkill too. $150 for an, a keyboard and it really doesn't even cover the back of the, the, of the iPads and you got to buy a back cover. And So mm-hmm. I, I, found, I actually found this really cool case and it's not the, it's cheap, $20. It's for, through a company oh, on, really? on Amazon. I have it in the show notes. Uh, Com, Como, K-H-O-M-O. It's a, it's a a 10.5 inch t- case with a pencil holder. What a concept! And it's in purple. It has all kinds of different colors. Yep, all kinds of colors. But I always and go. I always if, if it doesn't have purple, I just I look the other way. It's a rubberized <laughs> back, but the with the with the kind of a mesh feel to it. It's a it's a nice feeling keyboard. Now, some of the drawbacks to it, I'm finding that the volume control buttons and the power buttons sometimes don't push real well. So I don't know if if I work through them for a while, they might. Uh, uh, uh-huh. They might work themselves through. So sometimes I do encounter some of that because now with the new screenshots uh, that uh, that I demoed uh-huh. with Mac stock is on the iPad. It's so cool. I can't wait to show you. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. uh, it, it made it a little, I'm sorry, I'm teasing you a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it, you're real sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, it does uh, It does have a good, uh, it's got a good feel to it. But the, the biggest thing was I love the fact that I, my pencil is right there. I don't have to go put it in a se- separate uh, place when I, when I carry it around with me so uh it's a good case 20 bucks can't beat it i mean it's it's, it's really actually cool. the black is 20 dollars. the purple is only 14.95 so oh there i see that actually uh, the other colors are cheaper too <laughs> it must right. be that the black is more popular i'm sure it is uh, 14.95 i'm looking to see very cool yeah so it's and, nice and it does like sleep to wake and it holds your pencil yep. and... that's that was the big thing was the pencil I had been yeah. looking for a case for a while, and hey, for once I'm buying a cheap case, <laughs> and and, yeah. and I'm happy with it because I would go f- when I first get the iPad, I'd buy a really really cheap case like ten bucks, and then you know it, it cracked right away. And right. this one is uh, you know, this one's pretty solid, so I'm pretty happy with it. So um, next topic we wanted to talk about that I I found is a really cool way to be able to read free I don't uh-huh. word free magazines Ding. from your public library. Surprisingly enough. CNET, actually, you know, I'm not always a big fan of articles that are on CNET, but this article really uh, 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 intrigued me. So um, this this art- article is talking about the many libraries had actually partnered with a company called RB Digital, which is uh, formerly known uh, as Xenio. Zine- Everybody knew what it was. Yeah, it's okay. This yep. was Xenio for libraries. Xenio had a libraries version of it, but they spun this off. I believe Xenio still exists in the paid uh, arena, but for magazines, but uh, this one uh, was sold off to a company called RP Digital, and hmm. basically they're telling you dust off your library card, go out to your library, your local library. My local library has it. I was pretty excited. I would think most libraries in the Chicago area uh, would tend to have it since it's a larger city, and I would think your, in your town it would have it as well. Uh, mm-hmm. um, and and uh, basically go off to the li- library's website. You sign up uh, for the site. You download the app. It's uh, RB Digital um, is the app, and then. I downloaded it onto my iPad, and I was able to not only do magazines. It looks like you also you can do audiobooks from here too. I think that we were using this when it was in you. Know, I didn't use it for magazines, but yeah, we were using this with the kids for their books because there was a way that you could download. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you still have to sort of like uh, quote unquote check it out, right. and it does have like an expiration. I don't know about the magazines, yep, they do but too. the so yeah, so then they'll expire. Uh, but we were. I had the. I set the kids up with their own. 
Amazon accounts and then you ah. could get a Kindle version. Gotcha. And so I populated their, their Kindle cloud. And so I, you know, we would go through and it was really cool for the books. Um, again, I don't know about the the library. I'll have to check this out and, and report back on it, but yeah. at least with the books, because my kids were doing this thing where I forget the exact name of it. Um, they're always doing some kind of literacy programs at, at schools and these books have reading levels and, um, grade levels and things like that. And it was a really good way to help you find books that were appropriate for your Absolutely. child's reading level at the time. So, so, yeah, this was really helpful. I'm, I'm looking forward to checking this out. Oh, good. And, and it's, uh, it's very easy to get to the magazines. No, and you're right. It acts just like they, the libraries only have a certain amount of copies, just like they used to, what you and I were <laughs> used to when we went to the library and you go there and the book wasn't on the shelf, then you had to put a reserve on it and wait for it to come back. And mm -hmm. it's the same deal here. They, they have only set amount of digital copies of, of the magazine and, then you, and you just reserve it. And then when it's turned in, then, then it's your turn to get to grab it and read it. So um, for free, how do you beat that? I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's I mean, and I know the libraries also have uh, service through what's called, I think it's called Overdrive. Um, I think mm -hmm. that's the one that's that's the one for books, uh, as well as uh, th that would be somewhere. This uh, th that that service is available too, and I know a lot of them. I my mom used to do, 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 still does that. She doesn't want to. Uh, she likes to get books all the time, and she uh, the maybe audio books too. But they do. Audio yeah, books maybe anyway. that's the one that we were using was Overdrive. Yep, that's it, was, it was something similar to this, but I do remember using the right. service too. So well, this one was more geared towards magazines, but it also I see you, you can do audio books on this too. So, but. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I think the libraries, you know, really, if you think about the public libraries, really need to reinvent themselves. Um, they, you know, it's a lot's changed uh, in 20, 30 years since libraries have been around mm -hmm. where you go to the library all the time and you grab a book off the shelf or you would uh, uh, grab that magazine or a newspaper and want to be able to research something. But with the way the Internet is nowadays, yeah, they, 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 they need to really reinvent themselves. And, you know, yeah, some, libraries, just, some libraries have done better than others. Um, it's just about as easy as looking it up with the Dewey Decimal System. <laughs> exactly. No, we are no, that old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, going to that card catalog. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, it's interesting. Uh, my my local library, they have repurposed the card catalog and they, they have put seed packets in it and they have a seed library. Hmm. I thought that was a really great way to repurpose hmm. some uh, old technology, so to speak, in, in a new way. That's uh, that's I never thought to do that. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's fun. But uh, uh, but uh, unless you had anything else on that topic, I think uh, check it out. We'll have the link I said in the show notes, and uh, we can go through that. So moving on to a couple uh, apps and tips. Anybody here see Hamilton? I know you haven't. <laughs> Not yet. I, I did see it. It's a great. It's absolutely amazing uh, play. There's actually uh, the Hamilton official app in, in the iTunes Store. So it, it actually goes through, and, and this actually might be a good app you know, for the kids, uh, all things Hamilton, learning the, the history. One of the greatest things about uh, what Hamilton, which I, which I enjoyed, is I know and a lot of people, I'm sure, I know the history of you know what happened. You knew what was going to happen with, with Hamilton and, and, and Aaron Burr, and you knew what was happening with George Washington, all the things that led up to everything that happened and, and his story. So it's a lot. It's a lot of fun to follow it along and um, and, and and learn the story. Well, this uh, this app actually goes out there and actually gives a lot of details as far as uh, fun facts and stickers for the kids and, and the news about it and uh, you know the originals the, the original cast from New York and of course their merchandise. So they advertise it. it it's got some advertising piecing, uh, pieces up to it too as well. Uh, There's stickers. Oh, cool! It says share fun show related stickers with your friends. I'm looking at it now. I have a client who's pretty. Uh, yeah. She's obsessed with Lin Manuel. <laughs> okay. So I can't wait to share this with her. And now would be a good time to tell our listeners. Do you know, Dave, how to share an app with someone, someone special to you that you find and you want to share it with someone? When you go into the app store and you're looking at the app on your iPhone, mm -hmm. in the upper right hand corner, there's a little share button. And you can tap that right. and you can copy the link and you can text it to them. Correct. Or you could just message it to them and then they'll get that link and they can just tap right on it and download it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do as soon free. as we're done recording is I'm going to send good. this to my little lady friend and, and she's going to be so excited. And then, and then she's going to probably send me all of the stickers. So <laughs> thanks, Dave. <laughs> and and uh, like I said, the, the biggest thing is it's free. We like free. Mm -hmm. um, so but everybody could check that out. Um, I'm going to skip around here a little bit. I, and you uh, brought up a, a cool iPhone car clip that you found. Uh, that uh, Yes. 
I live that? in a really hot state. It is just really hot here all really? the time. And I, I get so envious <laughs> when I go on rides with other people. Like Jody's got this really awesome clip that she has clipped to her mm-hmm. windshield and it hangs down and she can just kind of poke at stuff from it's just awesome. And I and I know so many people that have these things, but out here in Arizona, you cannot do that. And it's not because it's illegal or because it's, you know, occluding your view or anything. You cannot do that because your phone will burst into flames. No, it won't actually burst into flames, but it will get really hot and it'll shut off on you. It's just really, really hot. And so uh, I have a really old car and there's like a little cubby where you can, I guess, I guess it was built for back in the day when you would carry CDs with you. And I guess it was, you know, a slot where you could put your CD cases. Mm -hmm. And so I usually kind of tuck my iPhone in there to try to keep it out of the sun, to try to keep it cool. And it's kind of, you know, nerdy, but it actually, if I'm listening to something on it, uh, you know, I'm too lazy to route it through the stereo speakers or anything like that. Cause then I have to, then I have to give up a second port and I just don't want to do that. Um, so sometimes I'll stick it in there and it'll actually magnify the sound a little bit. Kind of like if you've ever stuck your iPhone in a bowl. Yep. to try to amplify the sound. It's a cool little party trick uh, <laughs> tip there for you. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I got so jealous after riding around with Jody and other people that have these really great clips for their their cars. And I thought, how would I, how can I make this happen? Like, how can I clip something in my car? And then I think uh, at Macworld, or not Macworld, um, at MacStock, I, yeah, forceful thinking. <laughs> uh, at MacStock, I won a little, a little thing during our little uh, trivia quiz yep. thing mm-hmm. that is one of those things where you put a magnet on the back and it clips to your, your car. You can, you can stick it to your dash. But then the problem with that is, so see, here's all my caveats, right? So I have, first of all, I have a case on my iPhone 6S. So that makes it thicker. Mm -hmm. Then I have a pocket on the back of it because my iPhone is my wallet. There are times when I just leave the house. It's so freeing, so liberating. (laughs) I leave the house with just my phone and that's it. And I I keep all my most important things in the little pocket in the back. So that prevents me from being able to use a magnet or any of these little stick on things that because the pocket's in the way. I'm like, well, what am I going to? So I've been searching and searching, you know, what is going to fit this thing? So I finally found this car clip and we'll have a link to it. And there's probably other ones that are similar to it. It's it's by the maker is called Loren and it's called a luxury mobile cell phone mm-hmm. car mount holder. Now, it's not just for iPhone. It fits all, all different kinds of phones. And you can even it even fits a seven and a seven plus And it fits with a case because it's one of those things where you stretch it apart. I don't know. I don't know how they the, the people in the 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 design department came up with this design, but it's pretty cool. And you, you stretch it apart and you can it'll fit your phone with a case on it. And like I said, mine's extra thick on the back because I have a pocket and it fits that just fine. And then it has this kind of a gripper thing on the back and you just clip it, you stick it on your vents for your air, you know, your, your heat and air conditioning. Mm -hmm. And that's what is, is that's why I'm able to use this without my phone catching on fire (laughs) because obviously I'm driving around with at least the, the air conditioning, either I'm running a full blast or at least I've, you know, finally when the cabin cools down inside the car enough, you know, then you can turn it down to like one. <laughs> but you have to drive with AC on everywhere you go here. And right. so because I'm able to clip this to my vent, it keeps my my phone from overheating because there's air blowing on the back of it. And it it doesn't get cold enough. It will never get cold enough here. It's just it's it's like hot as 80s. So it'll never get so cold that it'll freeze the phone, right. but it keeps the phone at a nice, cool operating temperature. And it's just right where I can see it. And so what I have to go back to Castro again, I love playing podcasts in Castro because <laughs> the Castro interface has those nice big buttons and I can just kind of poke at it and I don't have to really look at it too much, you know? So I'm really, really loving this. I'm just happy that I finally found something yeah, right now. Good, it's actually. under 10 bucks. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a super, and it's, it's cheap, but it's not like cheaply made. Like I thought, oh man, this thing's plastic. I, I didn't have high hopes for it because in plastic, in, in, in Arizona, plastic is murdered here. It's yeah. just, it falls apart. Nothing plastic lasts very long, but because of it, where it's clipped and because it's usually got cool temperature blowing on it, I think that's what keeps it from disintegrating. So I might just have to buy a couple of them and just, you know, have one in my husband's car and just have like a backup just in case it does happen. But I've been really, really happy with it. So if you live in a hot climate, um, I or even I guess maybe the opposite would be true. If you live in a place where it's really cold all the time, then maybe, you know, because I imagine that happens to people with iPhones that live in a cold climate where the opposite is true, that the cold temperature affects how their iPhone operates. So maybe this will be good for people who need to run the, the heating vents in their car. 
So check it out. It's uh, like I said, it's it's under 10 bucks and we'll have a link to it in the show notes. And I'm really happy with it. And, you know, it's just these small little details that make me so happy. I don't know. It looks like a, actually a very good deal. Uh, you know, not not bad at all as far as. Uh, well, what do you use in, in your car? How do you um, travel with your iPhone? I, I don't. I, I'm tempted to just look at this clip because I've tried everything. And it, <laughs> and it, oh, you uh, have too. You've been frustrated oh, yeah. with the two. And, and I'm looking at the vents that are pictured in the Amazon, uh, um, the, the picture there, and uh, it looks like it. Uh, it my, works. Oh, it's one of my. Because I thought so. my car is like 14 years old, and I thought, oh, yeah. it's not going to work, and it sure does. It's just the way that it's built. It's like got this kind of a crisscross pattern, and you just stick it on there, and it just stays. Yeah. So no, no, for sure. And I'd let to check it out. We'll, we'll have it in the show notes, and uh, we'll let able. me know if you like it. Yeah, I'll, 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 I probably need to be better and not spend money on stuff. So I, so I probably, oh, come on. It's only $10. I got a clip here. I know. <laughs> so um, one, one, one app I'll pick uh, real quick, and I think everybody pretty much knows about this app, is uh, Ellen DeGeneres actually created it. It's called Heads Up. Um, we'll have an, a, a link in the show notes. It's always a fun party party, party app. Have you played this before? Yeah. I haven't yet, but I, I want to. I'm always looking for new stuff to play. Yeah, I watched the trailer. She, you know, of course, Ellen always has fun with things, and uh, she she did a video showing how the game plays. And I've played it a bunch of times. Uh, the our family's done it, and it's it's 99 cents in the app store. And I believe you there's there's expansion packs that you buy, and you just you, know, you basically you put you put the iPhone on your forehead, and then the other person has to describe what the word appears on on, on the screen, and uh, it's all kinds of different categories and all that fun stuff. So. Uh, anything from movies to animals to act it out. So, so uh, check this game out. <laughs> it, it, it could be a lot of fun. I'm telling you, it's uh, it's uh, definitely something special. So uh, check it out. No alcohol required, but if you um, want to make it a little extra fun. <laughs> I, yes, I played it with a little bit of alcohol involved, and it, it was interesting. So did you have anything uh, else that you could think about that you've been encountering before we uh, wrap this thing up? Um, well. I wanted to pick your brain about something. Yeah, so, please. and this could be a sorry surprise. It's not in the show notes. No, um, I'm okay. That's, that's what I <laughs> this like. This is like one of those things where it's kind of on my wish list for I, the next whatever the next iOS is ever going to be. It's just always on my on my mind. Mm -hmm. So, I wonder. You can tell me. Does this exist? So, I'll give you a use case scenario. So, okay. I said like the kids went back to school, right? Well, when they go back to school, so now my, my son's in middle school. So now he has like 11 different teachers, you know, throughout the, mm -hmm. the four quarters, he's going to have 11 different teachers. And then there's admin and faculty and stuff like that. So I had a whole bunch of new contacts to add to my iPhone. Right. Now, the way that because, you know, I manage a family. So the way that that my husband and I do it is we each have our own separate Apple IDs. And I always like right. to, I know this is kind of like beating a dead horse, but I like to talk about this stuff on, on different episodes because it gets people thinking about yeah, how you can use iOS in fun and meaningful ways. Exactly. <laughs> so, so how we roll is he has his own Apple ID and I've got my own Apple ID Me and too. then we have a shared Apple ID. And over the years that has gotten pared down to just be like at first I, I I was using it for calendars and then they added sharing so then you could share calendars and this and that. Right. So now it's basically down to we mostly use it for two purposes right now. This the shared Apple ID. We use it for iTunes and the App Store. Okay, so the whole family can share. So we have like a homegrown or a home rolled family plan before there was ever a family plan that came out. I'm still trying to wrap my my head around, and that's another thing I want to pick your brain about. Because um, I did hear someone else talk about it that I guess in iOS 11, but it probably depends on what other devices you have. And see, that's where the problem is. Because I told you, like in this family, we hand everything down. So there's always, and I kind of do that on purpose because I work with so many different clients. I, I like to keep old stuff around for a while so that I can still, you know, help those people out. Um, sure. So I try to keep old versions of stuff around. And so we've got older devices. So that may or may not work in the new version of iOS because I, I, like I said, I heard somebody talk about how you can share because I just, I just, I think I told you, I didn't, I didn't meet it, Dave, but some, sometime on one of these upcoming podcasts, it's going to happen soon. <laughs> I'm going to hit the 50,000 picture mark. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting close. I'm like really getting close. So, uh, so I ended up having to upgrade my iCloud storage to the, what is the two terabyte. So now I'm two like, terabytes. I'm paying like oh 10 gosh. bucks a month for that. Yeah, I'm I, thinking, hmm. I have 200 gigabyte. Yeah. So, you uh, on something? Oh my gosh. 
What's that? You beat me on something? You're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> uh, but see, I have a family to support here. So I've got other mouths, other iPhone mouths to feed. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out how am I going to, you know, disperse this, this, you know, across the family plan because my son, right. now that he's in, in school and he's starting to store more and more things in the cloud and we want to back up his computer and that. So, sure. so I'm starting to think about that stuff. But in the meantime, um, so back to this back to school quandary now. So now I've got these contacts that I need to add, right? So I go to start adding these contacts and the way that we've done it in the past, like I started to say, we have this, this, his, hers and ours kind of Apple ID set up here. So the shared Apple ID that we use is for the iTunes and app store. And then also it's for our contacts. So he's got his you know, work contacts through his, I guess they use, you know, a server or something for the school contacts and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then he's got his colleagues and his personal contacts. And then I've got my, you know, so you've, you've always got a situation where you've got your personal life and then you've got your professional life. So we each have that going on. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we have our family life, like our shared family life. And so I didn't want it to be like, where he was putting all his contacts in. I was like, I don't know these people. They don't mean anything to me. Like, I don't want to mix to my contacts. So we each have a shared iCloud Apple ID that we use on our iPhones in that capacity just for shared contacts. So that includes all of our family members and our, our friends that we share, you know, that sort of thing. And then there's colleagues that are in separate ones. So when it comes to school, you know, the kids are back to school now. Like I said, I just started adding these new contacts. Well, I didn't want to have to like do double the work. I wanted my husband to be able to get those contacts. So I added, you know, like the new principal, um, all the new, you know, these 11 new teachers. So what I had to do, so this is, this is what I had to do. I had to go into settings. Okay. And this is an iOS 10. So I had to go into settings. I had to scroll down to contacts. And then because I have multiple accounts in there. Okay. Cause I have my main, my main squeeze, my iCloud. And then we have a shared iCloud. I had to go in and change the default account to the shared iCloud, not my, like I had to switch it from mine to the shared one so that when I Im, when I imported, you know, cause emails started coming, you know, from teachers and stuff. So when I went to save a new contact or if I wanted to manually enter it, I had to switch the default account to, to the shared cloud so that they would go in there mm. because in currently there is no way to manage groups very effectively. Like I just had an instance today. So I, so I just got done entering all those contacts. Right. And then I switched it back and then I still ended up, this is what I'd like to do is I, I would like to avoid this. I still ended up having to go to my Mac and open up the contacts app there. That's what I call the Holy grail. Like that's where everything synchronizes in the contacts app. Like if you have clean contacts, your life will be so much happier If you've got duplicates and you've got, you know, first name and the last name spot, you've got last name and the first name spot, or you're using, you know, first name and the title. I mean, it's just going to be a mess. It's just not going to look, it's not going to flow. I have contact Zen and I want to keep it that way. I really enjoy, I have, I have really, really worked really hard to prune and preen my contacts list. So I ended up having to go on the Mac and open up contacts and then I had to, you know, pretty everything up. I, I like to put like the school logo or I really, really like pictures in my contacts and it's easy enough to do in the iOS version, right? That's fine. But having to do it in multiple things, it was just faster and more efficient. This is where, this is where the Mac still comes in for the heavy lifting. You know I mean? This is a heavy lifting scenario. So I had to do the heavy lifting on the Mac and I had to, you know, do more than one contact and and get them all set up with all their titles and everything. It was just faster to do it there. And then I was in an email today where I wanted to email like a group of teachers about something. I had a question that I need to ask and I wanted to just simply, you know, like you can on the Mac, you can say, okay, go to this group. Like here's all my kids, teachers, email all the teachers in this group. Well, if you set it up on the Mac ahead of time, then you can do it on iOS but without having it in iOS ahead of time, you're kind of screwed as far as being like you have to add, you know, cherry pick and add the people one by one. You can just type the name of the group that you already have set up, which is great. But then I had an instance where there was another faculty that wasn't in the group yet mm-hmm. and I couldn't get her in the group in iOS. And that really frustrated me. So I'm wondering, have you explored anything or maybe this is your homework, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> have you explored anything in iOS 11? Is there any changes to context? in iOS 11 that make any of this any more painless? Well, I'm looking at it now, and uh, 
in iOS 11, they separated out account. It's now called accounts and passwords. So if you go into that, um, it gives the list of all the accounts that you have uh, set up. So in my case, I have an iCloud, Outlook, and Gmail account set in there. And then the app and website passwords, um, believe it or not, is it actually in this uh, group. It's not you know, – hmm. to go to those before you had to go into the – I believe they put it in Touch ID and Passcode or, or on iOS So is contact still – is it – has that – because like in iOS 10, it's your first in the settings, it's your Apple ID. So it's your picture, your name. Right. Then there's all of, you know, airplane, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cellular, personal hotspot notifications, control center, all this stuff. And then when you get below, let's see, when you get below iTunes and App Store and then Wallet and Apple Pay, then you get into the individual services. So then you have mail and then contacts, then calendar notes and so on and so forth. So is contacts, is that, are those services still broken out? there in the settings in iOS 11? Yeah, because what they did was they moved, um, If you now if you go into the account, that, that's the first thing in settings, on mm-hmm. iOS 10, you would go in there and it actually would show iCloud and iTunes and setting up family sharing, your name, your password security, all that stuff. Um, but there's an also- That's where the toggle switches are. Right, because then you can go into iCloud and then it shows uh, how much space you have and all that stuff. Yeah, but go back a page. Go go back actually two pages and scroll down to the section where all the services are broken out, where you can tap on and then they make changes. Like, and you know how if you, if you tap on mail, then you have right. your accounts, message list, messages, threading, in, composing. Uh, what they did is in iOS 11, they put it in a group called accounts and passwords. Oh, really? So it's so broken out. In there? In there instead. But I'm looking at the accounts now, and I see um, iCloud. I could tap it. Um, and then, so what do you see for contacts? Uh, like what kinds of preferences in iOS now can you manage for just contacts, nothing else? No, you can't. No, I don't see it. It's either on or off. Well, that's – yeah, that's what I mean. That's the toggle switches. But there's a place in iOS 10. Like if I go to just contacts and settings, it says accounts, but I don't need to muck around in there. Then this is where you can change your sort order, like first, last, oh, display order, mm-hmm. first, last, the sort name, your info. And then this is where I was talking about where I had to go in and change it to my my default account. I changed it from my iCloud to the shared iCloud. Right. And then there's a there's a setting for contacts found in apps. You can toggle that on or off. And then below that is import SIM contacts. I guess that's if for if you had your contacts stored on a SIM card from another phone, then you could plug it in there and import them that way. So that's where I'm talking about in these settings, these granular settings just for the contacts app, how the, how the, not the account, but how the app on the iPhone oh. interacts. Okay. Yeah. I found it. It's actually, um, it's own, it's its own, uh, group again. It's the same thing. Um, mm-hmm. it also in iOS 11, it also has uh, Siri and search. You can do search and Siri suggestions and find apps. You can turn that on and off. They've added that. Um, okay. Uh, under the sort order, you have that. You have the display order, the short name, your info, and then the default account. And you can uh, choose whichever two accounts you want to make. Your, so uh, then contacts found in apps, that's a toggle switch. And so you're seeing in iOS 11, they've added Siri to that. So you could probably, right. well, you can already do that. I'm not going to say it, but you can always, you can do, you know, hey, phone lady, you can say, show me the contact information for so-and-so. Right. And then she'll say, well, what would you like to know about so-and-so? And you never really answer. It's kind of a redundant question. Right, right. It's like, I just need to know the gate code. <laughs> but you're not going to tell me that. Right. That so it be. doesn't seem like they've added anything no. anything new. So it seems like that's no. still kind of a problem. Maybe it's just not enough of a problem for enough people. Yeah. But that's just a frustration that, that I had. And I wondered if there was another. And maybe people listening, I'd like to know, you know, is there a better way to go about doing that? But it still yeah. seems like the Mac will never die because contacts is where it's at <laughs> yeah no you're right um that's something to explore and, and i definitely you know let's get uh and people that are listening uh uh hit us up uh on our facebook page uh you can uh, com- make a comment onto our blog um you can also hit up hit us up on, twi- on twitter and uh, ask the question or answer the question that we're yeah, say for. melissa duh it's right here this is how you yeah, do it so I'm, I'm i would love to it, obviously that. i haven't had a chance to look at it as i'm talking to you so we don't i don't want to be distracted so i'm i'm looking as i talk here um, but if there is something obviously I come up with, I will definitely share it with everybody. So, uh, but no, that was a good, that was a good, uh, good topic. And 
Apple ID and sharing is, is just always been a nightmare. I've kept my account separate. Apple always tells you now you want to merge them into one, but I don't know. Sometimes I just worry. Um, mm -hmm. One of the good things in, in my business now, everything is now moved over into the Outlook app for me for work. So now I can keep my, my business uh, contacts and my personal contacts separate uh, mm -hmm. because all the contacts are stored because now we, we keep everything secure within the Outlook app as opposed to um, – using the native mail app so I can't I can no longer use the native mail app on on, on an iOS device for work hmm, um, interesting. That's, and that's what a lot of companies are doing now is they're 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 starting to to keep things a lot more secure because that's what's called active sync and, and there's no way to secure uh, uh, secure wipe the information off of the device other than wiping the whole device um, if is that use. what's going on with with Yahoo because I had a client who uh, they said, oh, I don't know what happened, but we had to change our password. And oh, my gosh, was it a pain yeah, to try to get it to. Yeah, Yahoo's, that's a whole other animal. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, don't use it. But yeah, yeah well, exactly. some people and are really invested in it. So what are you going to do? Uh, who, who knows where it's going to go either. Now that Verizon owns them and it's part of Oath and um, the and uh, AOL and that whole family. So um, who knows what they're going to do? Uh, I, I wouldn't feel, I feel very nervous depending on their email system. I mean, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. happy, I'm happy with Gmail. So. Uh, but if we get that answer, I definitely will put it out in the show notes as well as if you give us an answer, that would be great. You could uh, uh, contact, contact us. And uh, I think with that, I think we can wrap this uh, this episode up. What do you, put a bow on it. Yeah, Sounds let's, good. Let's do it. Thanks for listening. And uh, we hope you are more in touch after with iOS after hearing this episode. So subscribe to our podcast in, our, in your favorite podcatcher and uh, show your friends how to look for us in iTunes. We look forward to bringing you even more useful information in future episodes. With that, I am David Ginsberg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. And I'm Melissa Davis, and you can find me online all over as the Mac Mommy. And great episode. Appreciate it, Melissa. And until next time, thanks for listening.